This meeting is being recorded. Good evening, brethren. May Good we evening. please silence all background noises? My name is Latara Burley, and I'll be your moderator for this evening's class. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Tampa branch was established in the year 1996. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you the Dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joel Turner, and our president, Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim, it has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul filled with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Now, Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on the chart as a cloud. Now Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of the chart to show you that everything on this chart is within a cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word of son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plain as Joshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should all ask ourselves is, what was the name of the savior during the time he walked the earth plain? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof 
that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby men can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. And can we have a class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Cynthia Smith? Our scripture lesson today is 1 Thessalonians 5 and is it 21? We're going to do the whole chapter. Okay, the whole chapter. And we'll have a musical selection by Dr. Lisa Zizi. Our scripture readers are Dr. Pamela Turner and Dr. Lisa Zizi. Good evening, class. Let us all bow our hearts and mind in a moment of prayer and give thanks to Yahweh for taking us out of the world and bringing us into him where we can learn of him as he really is and actually exists. And for us to sit with an open heart and with an open mind to accept things that are being said from the floor through investigation and for him showing his mercy to us on a daily basis, even though we don't deserve it. And for our brothers that are visiting with us here in Florida, let's have them get a safe passage back home when they do decide to um, go back home. And with all these blessings and many more, let us all say hallelujah. 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 Okay, um, I'm singing actually with Jennifer Marshall and also Angel Williams. She's joining us. We're singing one of Judith's songs. Do you know? Ready? Mm -hmm. You'll have the baby in the back and it's live music. Can you guys turn on the video? Uh, well, we could. We, we didn't dress up for you, but we certainly can. <laughs> okay, can you see us okay here? <laughs> yeah. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, let's do this a little bit more. Okay. Two, three, four. Do you know how I long to see? Oh, 
So I will be reading 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter from the King James Version of the Bible, inserting the proper names. 1 Thessalonians 5, but of the times and of the seasons, of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of Yahweh so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For Yahweh hath not appointed us to wrath, but, but to obtain salvation by our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Messiah and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of Yahweh in Yahshua the Messiah concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesyings, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very Elohim of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray Yahweh your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless un under the coming of our Savior, Yahshua, the Messiah. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Savior that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Savior, Yahshua, be with you. That was uh, 1 Thessalonians 5. Okay, this is great. Uh, we have a, a bunch of visitors, and they're all drinking beer at Chuck's house. Uh, so I think uh, what I'd like to do is maybe postpone our topic. Uh, until next week, that'll give people a little more time to work with it. And uh, I would like to call for our first speaker, a visitor from Orlando class, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Seth Williams. 
to be clear, we're not drinking beer. <laughs> okay, here you go. You're un we're, un we're unmuted. Good evening. Good evening. I would say this is a shocker, but it's been blasted that we're here so <laughs> uh, but nevertheless uh the brethren from orlando they send their love and uh i'm happy to be with you tonight and we're gonna see where yahweh leads us um uh first and foremost i, I would like to uh calm my nerves first <laughs> off and uh and thank you know Tampa for uh, having a Zoom for us to gather and listen to tonight while we commune here and drink our beer, as it was said. No, we're really not drinking beer. I promise you. <laughs> I, promise you we're not. I promise you we're not. Um, but uh, let's, you know, the reason why we gather um, on these Zoom calls uh, in person uh, at class is for the hope that first Yahweh will have mercy on us and continue to lead us and guide us and show him, show us the way that he wants us to go. Um, get me John 17 and one, please. Okay. I'm sorry. You got that, Pam? I have it. John 17 and one. These words spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true Elohim, and Yahshua the Messiah whom thou hast sent. Okay, so the savior of the world states that life eternal is to know the father and the son. And to be more clear, it's to know that Yahweh, he is the true Elohim, and he also is Yahshua, the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. He is a unity. Um, the scripture lesson tonight was 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, and uh get me the fourth verse and this is what i'm probably going to try to work with a little bit tonight okay i'm gonna uh first thessalonians five and four and then five please five and four mm -hmm. but you brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief you are all the children of light and the children of the day. And we are not of the night nor of darkness. Okay. So sidebar, I just started, oh, I just finished the whole series of Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know why I never had an interest of inter interest in watching. I never, you know, it wasn't anything that, I was like, oh yeah, I want to watch Harry Potter. So I, I get, I just finished that. And then I just rewatched, uh, what was the movie we were talking about? Wrinkle in time. A Wrinkle in Time. And I watched the movie with a different set of eyes. And I was sitting there trying to figure out like, okay, Yahweh, I, I know what you're, what you're trying to show me, help me get a, a better understanding of it. And then just so happens that our scripture lesson tonight is talking about ye are children of light and the children of the day and we are not of the night or of darkness and Yahweh always puts um, signs and wonders out there for us brethren to know that this thing is real so I I'm not going to get into Harry Potter or uh, uh, the other movie but the principles in those movies was about darkness and light. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the, the wizards with their wands, you know, when they would fight the, the dark Lord, because that's what he called himself, they, their wands would light up. Mm 
and it was the light dispelling the darkness and then the wrinkle of time um the so-called bad guy it was darkness and you know the 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 darkness when you examine the movie what darkness was doing to the hearts and minds of people i mean it'll blow your mind so our scripture lesson is talking about brethren we're not we're we're, we're the children of light and we are not in darkness so how does that happen as how does that happen it's us knowing our creator and it's perfectly uh shown on this chart you have Yahshua and his bride they're in the light and then you have satan and his bride they're in darkness and there's i mean there's a distinct difference so we're gonna work with light tonight uh get me genesis one and one and you're gonna read that through i want to say the ninth verse so the yeah, the ninth verse, please. Okay, Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. And Elohim said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, Yahweh is uh, Yahweh Elohim is moving on the face of the waters, and he says, let there be light, and there was light. Now, note, it didn't say anything about the sun yet. It didn't, ha it didn't say anything about the sun being in the sky, okay? So mm -hmm. this light is not the physical light that we are accustomed to with the sun rising and setting. Uh, go to the fifth verse, and then you're going to drop down to the 15th verse, please. And Elohim called the light day. Uh-huh. In the darkness, he called night. Now, remember, we are children of the light. Now we associate day and night by the rising and the setting of the sun, but Elohim has not said anything about the sun just yet. And he is making a distinction between light day and darkness and night. Keep going. Mm -hmm. In the evening and the morning were the first day. Mm -hmm. Okay, now 15. Uh, go 14, please. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, yep. Genesis 1 and 14. And Elohim said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years mm -hmm. and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so and elohim made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night he made mm -hmm. the stars also and elohim set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and Elohim saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day okay so now we've established that that light that true light that's being referred to here is not the sun the sun is only a type and shadow of the true s-o-n which is Elohim now get me exodus 10 and 21 please exodus 10 21 and Yahweh said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt. Okay, so what's happening here? You have Moses. He, is, he was instructed to go on to Pharaoh, and Yahweh gave him signs and wonders, and 10 devastating plagues was pouring out on the land of Egypt. So this plague was the plague of darkness. So Yahweh is instructing Moses what to do. Go ahead that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness, which may be felt. Okay. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven. And there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt, three days. Okay. So for three days, the people didn't move because they couldn't see. They, they didn't move. It, it, I think it says that they didn't move from where they were because it was a stingent black darkness. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> 23. They saw not one another, neither rose any man from his place for three days. Now, can you imagine that? Keep going. Is that, was that it? But all, child, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. So then Yahweh is making a distinction between the Israelites and everybody else. Okay. From a, from a natural standpoint. Okay. 
Um, next, get me Exodus 13 and 21. And the next scripture reader, please get me Exodus 14, 19. I'm going to get uh, 14, Kim. Oh, okay. Can you get 13? Um, oh, 13, 21. I, I, I can jump over. Okay, yeah, I'll get 14 then. Okay, Exodus 13, 21. And just 21, yep. It is, and Yahweh went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud. Okay, so what's happening here? So then the children of Israel, we know, uh, through they went through the divided water, or they were getting ready to flee out of Egypt. Pharaoh, uh, Yahweh hardened Pharaoh's heart to where he wouldn't let the children of Israel go. But after that last plague, the death of the firstborn, the 10th plague, Pharaoh told the children of Israel, get up, get up out of here. So then... <laughs> Uh, Moses and the children of Israel, when they start getting uh, going to the Red Sea, the Egyptians started pursuing after them. And then Yahweh, he continues to make a distinction between lightness and darkness. So he, he, he was a pillar of, of, of fire to the children of Israel, and they had light in their dwelling, and the Egyptians, they didn't. Go ahead and read it. Okay, and Yahweh went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. Mm -hmm. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from the, before the people. Okay, that's good. 14, 19? Uh, Exodus 14, 19? Yeah, yeah. I, can, I can grab that. Exodus yeah, 14 and 19, and the angel of Yahweh or Elohim, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. Okay, so remember... Yahweh is continuing to make a distinction between light and darkness, but that true light, and we know that when they when they finally got into uh, the wilderness, that that cloud that they were following, the cloud that led them out of Egypt, it went and sat upon Mount Sinai. Okay, um, get me Nehemiah nine and twelve, please, and uh, Doctor Pam, can you get me Isaiah twenty one and one, please? Okay. Just looking up. Uh, just looking up Nehemiah. It's right after Chronicles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any second now? Here we Very go. Good, okay. Good. Nehemiah nine and twelve. Moreover, thou lettest them in the day by a cloudy pillar mm -hmm. and in the night by a pillar of fire. So we always go to the law and to the prophet. So all what's happening, all that's happening here is Nehemiah is looking back or, or rehearsing what Yahweh did in the land of Egypt. This all this is. Go ahead. Uh, he led us. Uh, moreover, thou lettest them in the day by a cloudy pillar and in, uh, and in the night by a pillar of fire to give them light in the way wherein they should go. Mm -hmm. 19 verse. 19. Yet thou in thy manifold mercies forsookest them not in the wilderness and the, the pillar of the cloud departed not from them by day to lead them in the way, neither the pillar of fire by night to show them light and the way where they, wherein they should go. See, even when they were disobedient, Yahweh didn't leave them. He continued to stay with them. He continued to lead them. Okay. Oh, yeah. They made a <laughs> After they made a goal, that's all yeah. Nehemiah is rehearsing that's here. 18, yeah. Next one, please. Uh, did you say it was Isaiah 21 and 1? Uh, uh, no, 2 and 1. Oh, 2 and 1. I'm oh, sorry. My mistake. I got it. No, no, you're fine, no you're problem. Fine. Isaiah 2 and 1. And you're going to go through to the fifth verse, please. Okay. The word that Isaiah, the son of Emma, or straight to the fifth or start at one? one through start five. at one and go through five. Okay, perfect. The word that, that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and All shall right, be so exalted. 
So Isaiah is prophesying of what to come. So listen to his words carefully, please. Go ahead. And shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, come ye, let us go up to the mountain of, the, of Yahweh, to the house of the Elohim of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they right. shall. Are you listening to what he's saying? He's talking about Yahweh is going to teach his ways. And then he talks about a judgment. See, we're in the judgment now. Okay. And there's a distinction between light and darkness in the judgment. Read. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. Mm -hmm. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn more anymore. Mm -hmm. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of Yahweh. See, so in the, in the last days, and, and we know on the day of Pentecost, and I don't want to jump all the way to that, but in the last days, it said that judgment began at Jerusalem. Uh, Ecclesiastes 2 and 3. Uh, uh, Pam, uh, jump to Isaiah 8 and 20 for me, please. Okay. You want that next? Yeah, go ahead. Isaiah so it's right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we have this read all the time, but it should, mm -hmm. bring a, it should bring another meaning to you when it talks about light. Go ahead. Right, to the lot and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Go back to the Moses chart for me. I'm sorry. And read that one more time and point at the Elohistic figure up here. Because it's so in, uh, what is it? Psalms, the 19th chapter, when it talks about the law of Yahweh is perfect. That's what it's talking about. Yahweh Elohim. That's the law. Mm -hmm. So the, the law of Yahweh is perfect. So then Isaiah 8 and 20, it says to the law and to the prophets. And when you examine these scriptures, all you have is the word of Yahweh came unto me saying, the word of Yahweh came unto me saying, that's that light showing up. And teaching his ways, okay, mm -hmm. to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Next one is e Ecclesiastes 2 and 13. Mm -hmm. And then Pam, jump to Isaiah 42 and 6 for me, please. Ecclesiastes 2 and 13. Look, and, and I, I just had this conversation with, uh, with, with Angel and Nikki, but everybody on this call when you get a chance read the book of ecclesiastes <laughs> read the book of ecclesiastes because everything that we so-called worry about when solomon is talking about <coughs> everything that he has witnessed and he said that he was a king so nobody witnessed and experienced more than he did because of his stature in the world and he said it was all vexation and va vexation of the spirit and in vanity. When you read and understand that, a lot of the things we worry about now, they don't even matter. I encourage everybody to read the book of Ecclesiastes, but go ahead. Ecclesiastes 2 and 13. Mm -hmm. Then I saw that wisdom excelleth folly as far as light excelleth darkness. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walks in darkness. See, read that one more time. The whole thing? Yeah. 13. Then I saw that wisdom excelleth folly. Wisdom excelleth folly. Read. As far as light excelleth darkness. Now, you know, when you're in a pitch black dark room and you turn on the light, what happens to the light of uh, the darkness? It's gone. It's out of there. Wisdom excelleth folly as light does darkness. And I know I misquoted that wrong, but really truly try to understand what that means. The things that Yahweh has in store for us, the knowledge and understanding that we have the opportunity to obtain is so far greater 
than anything we can imagine. We've walked around our whole lives in darkness. Nobody was born into the light. No one was born into the light. I don't care if you were born in class. Mm -hmm. nobody, nobody was born into the light. Yahweh had to pour out his spirit on us, show us mercy for us to expel the darkness that we walked around in. Next scripture, please. Isaiah, Isaiah 42 and uh, yeah, 42, 42 and six. And then you're going to you're going to read the seventh verse and then jump to the 16th verse, please. OK. 42 and six. I, Yahweh, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a mm -hmm. light of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. so, so he's talking about he's he, he's prophesying about what the what the Israelites are going to do. Now, these are physical Israelites. OK. So when we come into this class, and I know I'm jumping, but when we come into this class, we become spiritual Israelites, okay? We become spiritual Hebrews. We become heirs of the promise, okay? He's talking physical, but then we have to look spiritual after the day of Pentecost. So then when we get a knowledge and understanding, this is for us to do. It's for us to preach the unadulterated gospel to the to the ones that need the hearing. It's for us to shed that light on them. So invite people to class. Keep, you know, keep your conversation. Look, be around people who love the gospel. When I, uh, Lisa and, and Diane visited us this weekend and we were asking, you know, how Diane came into class and she was giving us her story. She can give you her own story. But what I took from it, you know, where she worked at after class, the class members would come to the restaurant and they would. Or, no, that was you. That's Lisa. I'm sorry. Yeah. Lisa, I'm sorry. That's right. She was the comedy <laughs> club and I was the restaurant. But they would, you know, <laughs> they would gather together in these places and they would preach the gospel. <laughs> and Lisa in the background, she, you know, she she walking around in darkness, don't know what's going on, but she see that light. She recognized something. She heard the shepherd's voice. You you, you get me? Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, she 40, 40 some years in. Yeah. Still here. Really? I'm sorry. I was one. I, I sorry. didn't I didn't I was age, one year I, old. I didn't <laughs> age you, did I? <laughs> but did I did you finish that uh Pam? No, so 42 and 7. Um yeah. Isaiah of Isaiah. Well, start, start back at six, please. Start okay, sure. Uh 42 and 6. I Yahweh have called thee in righteousness and mm -hmm. will hold thine hand and will keep thee. And give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles mm -hmm. to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Mm -hmm. And then and jump it, to 16, please. Okay, 16. And will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. Okay. Jump over to 45 and seven. And then uh, Lisa, if you, mm -hmm. or, or uh, Pam, jump to 60 and one, please. Well, if you have 45 and seven, that's fine. I have 45. Okay. okay. Um, I got Isaiah 45 and seven. I form the light mm -hmm. and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I Yahweh do all these things. See, now, this and, and this is, you know, if you spend any time with people out in the religious world, they have this mindset, it, you know, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. You're right. Because Yahweh says, I form the light. See, when you form something, it's a piece of you. He forms the light. He created darkness. It's not a part of him. He makes peace. He created evil. There is no darkness in Yahweh. He is nothing but light. And the absence of him from a, a, from a, a psychological, 
I'll, and I'll say it this way, from a psychological state is darkness. Not knowing your creator is darkness. Next scripture, please. Isaiah 60 and one. Uh -huh. Arise, shine, for thy light is come and the glory of Yahweh is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But Yahweh shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Mm -hmm. Jump to 19, please. Okay. So it says, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light. We have to preach this gospel. We have to draw these people in to the light. And Yahweh's going to do it all. But we have to continue to keep these doors open. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Isaiah 16 and 19. The sun shall shall be no more thy light by day, neither for mm -hmm. brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but Yahweh shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy Elohim thy glory. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself, for Yahweh shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy morning shall be ended. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then my last scripture in the prophecy is Daniel 5. Um, and that should be a King James Version. Okay. Uh, Daniel 5, 11 through 14. Now, what's happening here is uh, Daniel is being asked to interpret a dream. And uh, the, the king is astonished by what he's able to do. So Daniel is going to say something. Go ahead. Daniel 5.11. There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. In the, and in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him. So there, he's associating that light with wisdom. Remember, we are children of the light. We walk not in darkness. Go ahead. Whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say thy father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. Mm -hmm. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts were found in the name, in the same Daniel. See, all of those attributes, those are attributes of Yahweh, and they were found, found in Daniel. And how did they associate him? With light. Go ahead. Whom the king named Belteshazzar, now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. Mm -hmm. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel, which art of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king that my father brought out of Jewry? I have even heard of thee that the spirit of the gods is in thee and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. Mm -hmm. 14. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I just wanted you guys to see those attributes that they associated with Daniel. The first thing they said, he was a man of light. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then John one and one. John one and one. Mm-hmm. In the beginning was the word. Oh, in the beginning was the word. And it's talking about Yahweh Elohim. Read. The word was with you, was with Yahweh and the word mm -hmm. was Yahweh. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. Mm -hmm. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Mm -hmm. Keep going. There was a man sent from Yahweh whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Okay, that's good. So it's talking about Yahweh Elohim, that light. Uh, John three sixteen through 21, please. I got that. Okay. John, John 3, 16. For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, mm -hmm. that whosoever believes 
in him should not perish, perish, but have everlasting life. For Yahweh sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of Yahweh. And this is the condemnation. Mm -hmm. Now that condemnation is associated with darkness. Go ahead. That light is come into the world. Light is come in the world. And men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Mm -hmm. For everyone that does evil hates the light, neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that does truth comes to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in Yahweh. Okay. So it's talking about that light and that darkness. Yahweh is, he's continuing to make a separation and we want to be children of the light. Uh, get eight and get eight and 12. I'm going to skip nine and five. So okay. uh, John eight and 12. John eight and 12. Mm hmm then spake Yahshua again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The right. Ferris, mm -hmm. No, that, that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. It's self-explanatory. Uh, 11, mm -hmm. John 11 and 9. John 11 and 9. John 11 and 9. No, you know what? No, I don't want that one. Uh, <laughs> I have a lot of scriptures written down here. That's okay. Um, but I, I'm a nerd like that. <laughs> uh, mm. Five minutes, Seth. All right. Uh, ooh, where do I want to go? I'm going to stay here and I'm going to let the next speaker finish up. Get... Uh, get 12 and 35 that's fine of john yeah that's fine okay john 12 and 35 then yashua said to them yet a little while is the light with you so when yashua was walking around he was he was he was preaching to them and um he is warning them about he is getting ready to die and be buried so he's saying, yet a little while, read. Then Yahshua said unto them, yet a little while is the light with you. Mm -hmm. Walk while you have the light, mm -hmm. lest darkness come upon you. See, follow Yahshua. Keep your finger in the book. Continue to search and study these things. So we don't fall into darkness. So we don't let these things slip. Go ahead. Lest darkness come upon you, for he that walks in darkness knows not where he goes. While you have light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of light. Mm -hmm. These things spake Yahshua and departed and did hide himself from them. And look, I'm going to end there, but I hope someone got something out of what was said. And it's just an admonishment, you know continue to uh continue to in in our scripture lesson it says prove all things hold fast to that which is good so we got to continue to keep our finger in the book keep searching these things don't ever feel like you know it all you got it all because you don't mm -hmm. yahweh is too great for us to know everything mm -hmm. in this state and condition so continue to search these things and keep your mind busy because what they say, a uh, 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 idle mind is a devil's playground. Is that what they say? Mm -hmm. So um, with that, I'll say hallelujah. 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 Okay, we're going to have two more speakers. Um, so I'd like to call on uh, Nikki Johnson from the Orlando class. She's making her way over. Uh, 
Good evening, class. Um, good evening. Good evening. I'm gonna breathe. All these people here. I thought with Seth going first, Orlando was safe. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I enjoyed the testimony of the first speaker, and I'm actually just gonna go ahead and try to pick up um, right where he left off because he was working with this principle of light and darkness and. We know constantly that with, with things that, with principles, they say that the manifestation changes, but the principle remains the same. So when he's going back into the law and the testimony, because we know that, and we might as well just go ahead and pick up, give me, uh, give me Luke, the 24th chapter, uh, get 25 through 27 and then jump to, I don't need 44, just go ahead and get 25 to 27. Mm -hmm. So we know in, when we're listening to class or when we're at class and a speaker is working with a principal, the admonishment has been to go back to the law and to the prophecy. And it's not just out of habit because of repetition, even though that is important, but it is a reason that it is done that way. And that is a something that's important to understand. So it doesn't just become, I've heard a lot of speakers do it this way. And so I'm going to follow the lead versus I understand why it's done this way. And now I can help somebody else understand. So we know that he, so he grabbed Isaiah 8 and 20, and he talked about Yahweh Elohim being that true light. So when Isaiah is prophesying and he says to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And it gives you a better understanding of what it is that he means when you understand that Yahweh Elohim is that true light. And so if we go ahead and get, just get another witness, um, go ahead and get Luke. Luke 24 and 25. Then he said unto them, oh fools. And, and so now, heart. I'm sorry. So now this is, Yahshua. And we know here in Luke, he's already went through his death burial and he's resurrected and appeared unto some of his disciples. And this is what he's saying unto them. Go ahead. Oh, fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Mm -hmm. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And now this scripture is read all the time, but for some reason, it hit me a little different recently because you come to understand like, you can sit in class for a very long time or you can listen to the same things repeated over and over and over again. But until Yahshua actually gives you the understanding of it, then it, the actual grasp of it is quite different. And so when he's talking to them, we understand that the disciples, they have the law and the prophets. The whole world has the Bible, but there is a distinction made when we talk about what it means to sit under this divine vision and revelation or truly what it means for Yahshua to be the teacher, for Yahshua to have revealed something to you said that you can understand it and you can actually stand the reality of that light actually being in you so that you can shine, so to speak, that light on others. Go ahead and read that again. Okay. Luke 24 and 25. Mm -hmm. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. So he says, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. You can believe as much as you want or say that you try to everything that you read. And don't get me wrong. Don't mistake what it is that I'm saying, because the exercise is crucial. But the, the fact of the matter still is that light truly Yahshua, Yahweh Elohim, has to do the revealing. And that's what the point is that's being made. Go ahead and keep reading. That's right. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. 
They said, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them the things concerning himself. When you go back through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, when Yahshua was walking around in a physical body on the earth plane, he's constantly referencing, referencing something that happened back in the law and the prophets. And you get this repetition and it's like, he said all these things to them and he was in person with them. And then we read this Bible and it's like, are we really gonna understand it on our own? So he's saying them, now I've went through this death that I've told you about, and you can pick that up in, for example, Matthew 16 and 21, he preached his own gospel. I've gone through this death, this burial, and I've resurrected and now I'm appearing unto you. And they don't even recognize who he is because he's in that resurrected state. And so he says, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. We are an institute of research. And I feel like sometimes that just slips across our mind because when, we, when you talk about what it means to expound something to someone, it's not just, you know, I've had books that I read for school and you just kind of, you can skim through it and get an idea and write a great book report. And it's like, oh, I'm done with this class. But this is not that type of thing. Like this isn't something that the goal is to be done with it. The goal is to be able to understand it so that you can share it with someone else. So now he went back to the law and the testimony. So Seth picks up a bunch of scriptures in the law and in the prophets to show forth this distinction between light and darkness between light and darkness. And you get down here now and you're like, well, what does that mean? So not only is it manifest in the scripture, but if you can pull up the, um, pull up the Moses chart. So now this is the migration of the children of Israel, which is what essentially is detailed in the law and in the prophecy. And you'll notice that even on the chart, on the bottom of the chart, it's in blackness. On, there may be a few differences on some charts for some things, but this actually is one thing that is the same on every chart. <laughs> Egypt, this bottom part, which will be likened to the court roundabout because we know that we have a tabernacle pattern and that everything goes according to the pattern. And that's what we're gonna try to pick up a little bit. But so this bottom part down here in Egypt is black. It's showing forth darkness. And there's a contrast there at the Red Sea before you get to the wilderness of Sinai. So now when we're looking at our tabernacle pattern, um, if you can pull up the pattern, man by the pattern. Um, so we have a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. And we know that in the court roundabout, we have the gate, the laver, and we're talking about principal vessels and the cup of anointing oil. And then you get to the door and you're in the holy place. Now in the holy place, we have a candlestick and I'm not sure where the scripture is. Maybe someone else might know where it talks about the lighting of the candlestick because the one thing that, or obviously it's a candlestick but it provided light into the holy place. So there was never, <laughs> darkness there. We're talking about a pattern that we have that everything goes according to. So after you get through, and he, he kind of went through this already, after you get through a death burial and a resurrection in the court roundabout, you're in the holy place. We all, the scripture was always read so much in, um, in Matthew 24 and 15, where it says, when you therefore see shall see the abomination of de desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, you stand in the holy place. And this it's another one of those scriptures. I read it over and over. I've heard it read and it, it didn't still click to me what it is that that meant. But when we examine what's happening in the holy place, there is never darkness there. He talked about that contrast between light and darkness because when you turn on the light from a physical standpoint in a room, the darkness flees. You can't have one and the other. When you have the Ayer Asha Ayer chart that you're looking at, there's no gray area between Yahshua and the devil. It's either light 
or its darkness, period. So in this holy place, you have that table of showbread, you have the candlestick, and you have the altar of incense. So you have light, you have sustenance, so to speak, and then you have intercession. And so we end it in John, and we're just going to go back to that. Do you have that, uh, that witness? I think it might be in maybe 37. Um, it might also be in. Where it talks about the lighting of the candlestick. 37, 17 through 24. Of Exodus. It just talks about what's in it. Um, 24, they're not. He made a seven of a talent. I don't see where it's lit. It might actually be in Leviticus. Um, I mean, it says okay. here, um, so in Exodus 40 and 3, uh, or 40 and 4, and thou shalt bring in the table and set in order the things that are to be set in order upon it, and thou shalt bring in the candlestick and light the lamps thereof. Or did you want something more? Yeah. Um, it Where it goes into detail talking about the lighting, the actual lighting of the candlestick, so I'll I hopefully so remember where it is later, but I'm just going to try to keep moving. Okay. So go ahead and go to, um, go back to John and get John 8 and 12. Okay. Do you have that, Lisa? I do, okay. John 8 and 12. Wait, wait a second. John 8 and 12. Then spake Yahshua again unto them saying, I am the light of the world. So Yahshua is saying, I am the light of the world. Now we know that Yahshua came in to fulfill. It's repeated over and over again throughout Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He came in to complete, bring to an end, and convert into a spiritual reality, to fill those things that were written back in the law and the testimony. So now when we talk about this candlestick being a part of the holy place, we know down here now we're not operating in a physical tabernacle or a physical temple, which is what they had as a type for their salvation, but we're talking about the spiritual reality of it now. So then Yahshua, it's showing forth, Yahshua is these things, essentially. They had them back there for us to examine it as a witness, but now we are down here to see what it all really meant when we talk about everything pointing to Yahshua. So you had this candlestick that always provided light in the holy place. So Yahshua has to come in and say, I am the light of the world. I am the light. You have this table of showbread that provided sustenance, sustenance for the priest back there. So of course, Yahshua comes in and says, I am that bread of like, what is John 10 and uh, oh, I'm six, door, um, what is it? Well, he's the door in, in 10 and I'm nine. I'm come back to that one, but yeah, I need mean, bread first. And I don't know if it's come. Maybe, um, maybe it's six. At the end, I think it's a six. John, yeah, six in the 50s or something. Um, yes. Six and 35. Okay. Six and 33. Uh, yeah, six and 35. You can get right, it there. Right. Um, John 6 and 35. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger. And he that believes on me shall never thirst. He is that bread of life. He even gives them, he even tells them later on, he says, your, your fathers ate manna in the wilderness, which is bread, and they, they died. So we're not talking about the physical bread anymore. We're talking about the reality of it, which still is Yahshua. We had that altar of incense in there. And he says that he is the true intercessor between Yahweh and man. He is the only intercessor so that's what we're looking at where when we are examining what it is that's in the holy place and why should we should be standing there so to speak when we shall therefore see the abomination of desolation but getting back to this light and darkness so now get um 
and I, I didn't have it read, but there's also the scripture, John 10 and nine, where he says he is the door. So we just, you just see witness after witness after witness of Yahshua fulfilling and personifying those things specifically in the tabernacle, because he is, it's when we know that Yahweh Elohim appeared unto Moses, he transformed into that threefold tabernacle pattern. That pattern is his definition. So it is a representation. There are things that we can examine in the pattern that still point us back to Yahweh Elohim, truly Yahshua. So now go ahead and get me John, um, get John 12 and I mean, get me John 3 and 16 again. And then we'll go from there. John 3 and 16. Mm -hmm. For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I've heard this scripture read over and over again, even before I, before I came in class. You know, people have bumper stickers and t-shirts and everything that says John 3, 16. They never talk about what's above it or what's below it, which is why it was so, it stuck with me so hard when brethren admonish, you know, you, when you pick up a scripture in this book, you want to know the details of it, essentially, to get an understanding. You want to know who's speaking. You want to know who's being spoken to. You want to know what age and dispensation is happening in. You want to know what's going on before it, because like it's talked about, it wasn't always broken up into chapters and verses. But you, we at this point, it's not just about being able to quote scriptures. We really want to be able to have an understanding. That's what it, we started off in John 17 and one, where, or John 17 and three, where it talks about knowing is eternal life. Knowing Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yahshua is eternal life. And when you truly get to know someone, even from a physical standpoint, because we know the physical points to the spiritual, you get to know the ins and outs about them, what they like, what they don't like, what makes them angry, things that make them happy, all of those good things that we put so much energy into from a natural standpoint. And then it becomes such a unfortunate burden when we think about diligently seeking Yahweh. Well, at the end of the day, is the relationship important to you or is it not? And that's what we have. You get to a point where you have to ask yourself that question. Does it matter to you or does it not? And it's a hard, it's a, it's a difficult thing, but introspection, they say, is key. So go ahead and keep reading in John. 17 mm -hmm. for Yahweh sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And it says, and this is the condemnation mm -hmm. that light has come into the world. Now, I don't have a whole lot of time, but I would also encourage the scriptures that were called in the prophecy earlier to go back and examine the circumstances of the children of Israel during those times. And you'll see the utter darkness that they were in because of their disobedience. And, you know, it was mentioned that Yahweh still saved them time and time again. And actually, I want to pick, we're going to go back and pick up one of these scriptures. Get me Isaiah 9 and uh, uh, get 9 and 1 through 4, I think it is. Okay. I got that. Okay. Isaiah 9. Um, Isaiah 9, 1 through 4. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in. So to shorten this up a little bit, okay. you have to understand what's happening here. So the children of Israel, we, we, he's talked about already how once they got delivered up out of Egypt, I don't even have time to go through all. They get up out of the land of Egypt, out of the bondage that they were in. They're in the wilderness of Sinai. 
Yahweh speaks down this law to them. They agree, say all that you said we will do and be obedient. And then Moses disappears out of their sight, for lack of a better way to put it, for 40 days. And before that time period is up, they've already gone down and disobeyed the law. They built a golden calf. But they still don't learn their lesson. They're disobedient. They murmur and complain all throughout the wilderness of Sinai, which is why they were out there so long. They get over to Canaan's land and they were worse than they were in the wilderness, so to speak. They built two golden calves. And you can you can glaze over that if you want to, but it is really important to kind of go into the prophecy and read about the journey of the children of Israel and what Yahweh meant about the darkness that they were in. And so this is a part of what we're picking up in Isaiah. When you read Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel, you have these prophets that the light was in them. It said that light has come into the world. The light was in them and the children of Israel did not want to be obedient. They didn't want to have anything to do with that light. They wanted to do whatever it was. And it says it in Jeremiah, I think the 44th chapter, they wanted to do what it was that came out of their own mouth. And you read this stuff and it's like, this is the reality. You read, I never in a million years would have thought reading the Bible, I can look at the reality of what is going on present day. And we can talk about whether it's people that have come into class and just don't come or just people out in the world. People literally want to do whatever they want to do. And I don't mean that in the sense of with Yahshua in them following him. I mean that in the sense of they want to be a part of the darkness. You all at some point can probably testify to having talked to someone. I had a conversation with an old roommate of mine talking to her about Jesus versus the true name of Yahshua. And it was, it, it blew my mind that she literally said she her response back to me because we were having a conversation about Christmas and it was, you know, no J, no Jesus. And it was basically the shortened version of this is she said back to me, well, if this is a lie, then I'm going to stay in my lie and be happy. And I, the emotion, because I was newer in class at the time, and it was the first person outside of my family that I kind of got to talk to this gospel about, but it was, it was like, even thinking about it now, it, it broke my heart on the spot, yeah. but it is the reality of what so many people are believing. You can tell people the truth day and night, but there are people, and I don't even want to say that it's people because it's not them, but it's in them that they would rather, they would rather be in that darkness. So mm -hmm. you thank Yahshua for where you are and it's not to look out on them and say oh I'm better or anything like that but you talk about Yahweh putting you in a state and condition where you can be thankful and appreciative of his grace and mercy because you come to realize that you have done nothing you don't deserve it yourself you've done nothing to be a part of that marvelous light that we are talking about but so graciously it has been bestowed upon you so Go ahead and read. Uh -huh. okay. good. We're in Isaiah 9 and 1. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, mm -hmm. when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. Mm -hmm. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them has the light shined. Thou has multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. Mm -hmm. They joy before thee according to the joy and harvest. And as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou has broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. And we don't have time to go through all this, but when you when you also pick pick it up where they start talking about the state and condition that they were in in Jeremiah, the 44th chapter, it it it, it will blow your mind if you've never read it, but then it it really puts you into the mindset of examining yourself. 
And that's what, that's what it really boils down to. You can, we can examine what's in the scripture in first Corinthians, the 10th chapter, it says that these things were written for our examples. And we might as well just go ahead and pick that up and read it. Get me first Corinthians 10. And I think it's, I want the fifth through the seventh verse because it repeats it. First Corinthians 10 and five, but with many of them, Yahweh was not well pleased. You know they, what? You might as well start at one so that we can know what we're talking about. Go ahead. <laughs> First Corinthians 10 and one. Moreover, so this brethren, is the apostle Paul, and he is still looking back at the things that were happening back there with the children of Israel. Go ahead and read. Mm -hmm. I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them really that led them. And that rock was, was Yahshua, but many of them, Yahweh was not well pleased. It says now it's talking about, so we can repeat all over there about their disobedience, but this is still Paul looking back at the situation. And this is what he's saying with many of them, Yahweh was not well pleased. We don't want that to be our testimony where we come into class. We start learning about Yahweh Elohim Yahshua, and it's, we're still in a state of in condition where Yahweh is not pleased. Keep reading. For they were over, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things. It it's, says now these things, when we're going back, when it's being expounded upon, or when you're examining these things, or when you're researching these things mm -hmm. again, it says these things were they were our examples. It's a you have these epic events that have been laid out, but they are also examples of what not to do. There is a literal guide of what you should not do. It should make life, you would think, so much easier sometimes. I remember you used to have those, what is it, all those books for dummies, like <laughs> cooking for dummies and all these things that, you know, it tells you what to do and it breaks it down into very simplistic terms. And I do know some people who still are like, I just don't get it. But this is like path to Yahshua for dummies kind of like, <laughs> and I don't mean that in an offensive way. I, I do not mean it that way, but it, it, these things were written for our examples. So read them and know what is actually going on. Keep reading. Now, these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Mm -hmm. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day, three and 20,000. Mm -hmm. Neither let us tempt the Messiah as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Mm -hmm. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. And now we're reading over this because I don't have time to go into this, but you can take these things that the Apostle Paul is admonishing against now and go back and examine how it happened and the circumstances around it with the children of Israel. They were given judges and kings that they begged for and people that Yahweh sent to be over them. And it talks about with the judges that when the judge was alive, the children of Israel was in the way. So when they had somebody to physically look at, to I'll say, tell them what to do, then they were fine. But it says, as soon as the judge died and you don't have to get it, but it's, I think this is judges around two and 16. It says, as soon as the judge died, the children of Israel were back into their disobedience. What does that mean? So I you might have, got you. You might have a dean that you love. You might have whatever figure in this school that you have grown to appreciate. I'll say it that way. And they've guided you. They've helped you from a natural standpoint to understand some things, right? But we, you don't want to find yourself in a position where if you're out of the sight of that person or out of the sight of brethren in class, or those people pass away off the scene, that you end up back in the state and condition that you were before you claimed 
to have known Yahshua. We talk about what apostasy actually is. And I remember I used to look at that on the chart and think, you know, because in the middle of it, it's the Pope that's sitting there. Mm -hmm. But apostasy is not for those that are out in the world that never knew the truth. Apostasy is when you have recognized and admitted the truth and you've turned your back on it. You don't want to find yourself being, and that's what, I don't have time to get it now, but in the prophecy, being a recipient of that light and then still turning to darkness. What is that scripture? No. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Once you have been enlightened and tasted of. Oh, that's Hebrew. I need that. I need the scripture lesson too. Go ahead and get me. I need to know what that is in Hebrews. Go ahead and go back to the scripture lesson. Give me First Thessalonians. Uh, I've got uh, Thessalonians. Go ahead and read. Uh, you can go ahead and start at one. We'll go ahead and try to close this up. Okay, First Thessalonians 5 and 1. Mm-hmm. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of Yahweh so comes as y'all. You can read this stuff and it just feels like present day. Don't nobody need to write you a letter and let you know about the times that we are in right now. Like you turn on the news or examine your news feed on your smartphone. Like nobody's oblivious to what is going on. Go ahead and read. Uh, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of Yahweh so comes as a thief in the night. Mm-hmm. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as to fail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness. That that And you have to take that personally. This We say introspection and examining ourselves and... This being something individually that has to take place. You have to know for yourself that you're not in darkness, that you're not wanting to be a partaker anymore of the darkness. Because I've heard a lot of testimonies from young adults that are in class and they are hung up on wanting to be a part of that darkness. I'm talking about brethren in class, wanting to be a part and it it becoming more important than the light. And it's it's a disheartening state and conditioning condition but again you have to examine yourself that that light is it, it talks about it being a marvelous light go ahead and get me um get ephesians 5 and 8 and then get the scripture in hebrews and i'll be done okay whoops i was over at hebrews 6 and 4 do we not want that i do want that i do want um ephesians first okay i'm sorry what was the ephesians one Ephesians five and eight. Okay, Actually, I got you can that. Start at start at six. Ephesians five and six. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of Yahweh upon. The Let children. no man deceive you with vain words. It's repeated several times in the scripture about not letting anyone deceive you. Mm-hmm. Listen, if you don't know what the if you have not been obedient and been diligent, you don't know what the deception might be. If someone comes to you with, we'll say erroneous doctrine, if you don't know what the truth is, then you unfortunately are susceptible to what might be erroneous. So you need to know what is in the book. You need to know what thus saith Yahweh. Keep reading because it says that because of these things comes the wrath of Yahweh. Keep reading. Upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For you were sometimes darkness, but you, but now are ye Be light. Be not partakers with them. You were of sometimes before and times past in darkness, but now you are supposed to be partakers of the light. Go ahead and give me the scripture in Hebrews and I'll be done. The scripture reading, uh, we're in, you want Hebrews? Yes. Okay. Hebrews 6 and 4. For it is impossible for those... I'm sorry. Did you yeah, want... That is what I want. Yes. Okay. Uh, can we right. start up? Can just... we start up? Please? Sure. We'll pick it up. Um, two, one. Just you know what? Just start at three. It's it's fine because I'm okay. Out of time. Hebrews six and three, and this and this will we do if Yahweh permit. 
For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of Yahweh and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the son of Yahweh afresh and put him to an open shame. And I don't even have time to emphasize what I want to in the scripture, but you have to go back and read it for yourself. It says that it's impossible for those that were once enlightened and have tasted of this heavenly gift. We talk about what apostasy is. It says for them to be renewed if they shall fall away again unto repentance because they have crucified to themselves the son of Yahweh afresh and put him to an open shame. So the encouragement, the encouragement is always, we, we know the difference between light and darkness, but the exercise of seeing it expounded upon throughout the scriptures and how Yahweh differentiates and even how you go all the way through the book. And then the apostles talk about this and I, there's a scripture that talks about the marvelous light that I don't have time to get because I need to be down. So, but it it makes a very clear decision. Yahweh Elohim is that light. If we know that Yash, Yahweh, Yahshua in you, which is in Colossians, is your only hope of glory, then that light should be in you. And then that's what you'll see when it talks about how when brethren gather and people just want to be near that, that light is, is mm-hmm. such a beautiful thing, but it starts from within first. So the encouragement is stay in class. Do be diligent, be mm-hmm. diligent. Encourage the brethren because during these times, everybody needs some mm-hmm. encouragement mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. all honor, all glory and all praise go to Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yahshua. Hallelujah. 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 Okay, for our final uh, speaker, I'd like to call in the Dean of Syracuse, New York class, Dr. Patrick Tri- Trivison. Did you? Yes. Good evening. Good evening. There's been an awful lot that's been brought out and I'm by no stretch of the imagination going to wrap this up in 30 minutes. So (laughs) let me, let me start out by, I want to read an article. And, uh, The reader who is here has the article in her hand. Ready? She'll tell you what it is and where it's from and everything. Okay. Uh, This is um, the Post Standard and its history section. Benedict, I think that's 15, 16, thank you. And the history of scandal plagued popes. Medieval popes were accused of murders, fathering illegitimate children, and selling religious sacraments. Now, they were accused of a lot of things, the papacy, during the Middle Ages. And really, if you study a detailed history of the papacy during the Middle Ages, you're going to find many similarities with the history of the Roman emperors. And you're gonna find some similarities with things that have gone on right within this school. Read, please. Catholic Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI committed quote unquote wrongdoing in the way he handled sexual abuse cases in his German archdiocese before he was pope, according to a church commissioned investigation released Thursday. The German law firm that conducted the investigation said Benedict's claims to have no direct knowledge of sexual abuse cases were not credible. Now, they found that his, uh, what he had said was not credible. In other words, he lied. 
And that's why he resigned. If you remember right, this is the Pope before this current Pope, mm -hmm. Benedict XVI. And he resigned. When's the last time you remember a Pope in history that resigned? They all died in office. This guy resigned because he knew he was going to get caught. Go ahead. And in other words, there was a lot of pedophilia going on and he knew about it and he covered it up. And so he tried to skate while the skating was good. Hmm. Now, I'm just telling you the facts. Read. The report amounts to a shocking and harsh condemnation of the retired Pope, the first Pope to resign his position before death in 600 years. 600, it's a long time. Let's see. Read. Though his predecessor was canonized and his successor has generally been popular, Benedict is not the first Pope among the nearly 270 in history whose scandals have caused Catholics and the Catholic Church headaches. Scandals have caused the Catholic Church headaches. Now, I, I was a Catholic, okay? And uh, I was fed up with Catholicism before I even came into class. But go ahead and read. The, the, uh, this is titled The Dark Century. The period between late 9th and 10th centuries saw some particularly bad popes, according to historian Eamon Duffy in his book, Saints and Sinners, A History of the Popes. During his, during his seculum, obscuricum, or dark century, the papacy became little more than a trophy in a rivalry between greedy noble families and many of these popes were more interested in these petty feuds than glorifying God or abiding by the vows of the priesthood. They were not interested in glorifying God. But your previous speakers have talked about the importance of glorifying Yahshua, of glorifying Yahweh. And that's really what it's all about. Read, please. There was Pope Stephen VI in power from May 896 to August 897. His predecessor was Pope for only 15 days before dying, perhaps of gout or perhaps murdered by Stephen VI's followers. <laughs> Once installed, Stephen VI put his enemy, another of his predecessors, Pope Formosus, on trial. He put him on trial, read. Which was kind of weird considering Formosus had been dead for months. He had been dead for months, read. <laughs> His corpse was dressed in papal vestments. They dug this guy up. They, they dressed him in papal vestments or clothes, <laughs> read. And propped up on a throne. Before, before being found guilty of perjury and other offenses. They found them guilty, read. Mutilated and tossed into a river. They tossed them into the Tiber River. There you go. <laughs> now, this is the kind of stuff that was commonplace in the Middle Ages, read. The people of Rome thought that was pretty gross. And they soon just deposed and murdered Stephen the Sixth. They murdered Stephen the Sixth. I mean, murder, these guys poisoned one another, these wealthy families, they did all kinds of stuff so that their sons could become Pope. Mm -hmm. They lied, they stole, they killed, they did all kinds of things. And don't take my word for it, read a history of the papacy in the Middle Ages. Read. Then there was Pope Sergius III, Pope from 904 to 911, who murdered his predecessors, bribed and threatened bishops, and fathered an illegitimate child. Hey, the illegitimate tips were nothing new back then. Read. This period also saw the papacy of John the 12th, 
who became Pope at 18 years old in 1955. He spent much of his time sleeping around and warring with rival factions. <laughs> at, as 15th century chronicler Bartomeo Platina put it, if he had any time to spare from his lusts, he spent it hunting and not in prayer. Not in prayer. <laughs> Read. He died in 1964 in the bed of a married woman, either of a stroke, being stabbed, or thrown out the window by the woman's husband, depending on which account you believe. <laughs> <laughs> Read. Um, next section is titled More Bad Popes. Pope Boniface VIII, who was Pope from 1294 to 1303, was depicted as being destined for the eighth circle of hell in Dante's Inferno for the sin of sin simony. Si simony. 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 Yes. Yes. That is selling religious sacraments and holy offices. Mm -hmm. His critics claimed he was a non-believer and that he said, pedophilia was no more a sin than rubbing one hand against another. Pedophilia was no more a sin than rubbing one hand against another. Now that's good for now. You know, you had a Pope who became um, Paul VI, Pope Paul VI. The founders used to talk about him all the time. And uh, they're trying to canonize him now. And before, and he was a, a cardinal in Rome before he was Pope and sent many thousands of Jews, Italian Jews in Rome to the gas chambers. And they're going to make a saint out of him. This is the Roman Catholic Church that the founder brought you out of, that Yahshua, has brought you out of the darkness. This is the kind of darkness that you've been brought out of into his marvelous light. I'm just gonna grab a couple of references here, okay? We're gonna go back in the Law and Prophets like your previous speakers. And I know they were just loaded with stuff they couldn't even get it all out uh let's get judges since uh she had judges there let's get the second chapter of judges and read uh, 11 through 13. okay oops i was muted judges 2 and 11. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of Yahweh and served Balaam. And the Balaam. children of Israel did evil in the sight of Yahweh. Now, after they came out of the wilderness of Sinai, if you could get the Moses chart up, we may come back to this if we have time. After they went out of the wilderness of Sinai, and then they went through the Jordan River, and they went into Canaan land, which was their their inheritance. This was this was the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And they did evil in the sight of Yahweh and Yahweh Elohim. And they went after other gods and they did all the things that he told them they were going to end up doing. And they said, no, but we will not. But that's precisely what they did. And they had judges over them, as was brought out earlier, before they had kings. Now, here they are. It's talking about in Judges here. Read again, please. Uh, 11, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of Yahweh. And they served did Balaam. evil in the sight of Yahweh. They did evil. Read. And served Balaam. And they forsook Yahweh Elohim of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt. They forsook Yahweh Elohim, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt, who had brought them out of darkness 
and into his glorious light, and they forsook him. They forgot about him. And they went up into the groves, and they had orgies, and they worshiped other gods and other goddesses of the nations that surrounded them. And that's, that's the kind of stuff they did. Read. And followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked Yahweh to anger. Now, they provoked him to anger. And people want to say, well, God back there in the Old Testament was a mean God. Listen, they made a covenant with him and they made a marriage resolution with him, a commitment to him, and they were married to him. They were his bride, and they continually cheated on him and broke his heart. And yes, he became provoked to anger on occasion. Put him into captivity, felt bad, brought him out. Ended up putting them back into captivity, back and forth and back and forth until finally Israel was taken into captivity by the Assyrians. And then Judah, a hundred years later, was taken into captivity in Babylon, which is where Daniel was, by the way, when you, one of your speakers had brought up earlier had interpreted the dreams of Nebuchadnezzar. Now, pick up, um, pick up Second Chronicles 33, one through 10. We're just picking up a few references here. I wanna try to show you that if you read Chronicles, if you read Kings, you're gonna see there were a lot of bad Kings. A lot of bad kings, just like there was a, a bad papacy, just like there was a lot of bad Roman emperors. Mm -hmm. This was nothing new. It just goes all the way back. A lot of evil Israelite kings. Read here, please. I got it. Second uh, Chronicles 33, 1 through 10. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign. Now Manasseh was an Israelite king. And he reigned 50 and five years in Jerusalem. That's a long time mm -hmm. back in those days. Read. But did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh. Yeah, here we go again. Read. Like unto the abominations of the heathen, whom Yahweh had cast out before the children of Israel. For he built again the high places which Hezekiah, his father, had broken down. His father, Hezekiah, had broken down all these high places, mm -hmm. these groves, mm -hmm. these altars to these other gods. And he built them back up again. Mm -hmm. Read. And he reared up altars for Balaam mm -hmm. and made groves and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served them. Now the groves were... There were these areas that they went up to, and the, they were in the form of a circle, and there were trees, and there was a grove. And in the middle of a grove, grove there was a stone pillar, mm -hmm. and the stone pillar represented the man, and the grove represented the woman. And what they did was they went up there, and they had orgies up in there, orgies. And they really enjoyed the orgies, and they didn't want to quit doing it. <laughs> Read, please. For and he built also he built altars in the house of Yahweh. Listen to this. He built altars to other gods in the house of Yahweh. House of Yahweh was the temple that Solomon built to house the name. Of Yahweh. <coughs> and he built altars to other gods in there. This is, this is, you would think that somebody would be afraid 
to do this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Read. Also, he built altars in the house of Yahweh, whereof Yahweh had said, In Jerusalem shall my name be forever. Shall my name be. And he built altars for all the host of heaven. For all the host of heaven. In the two courts of the house of Yahweh. In the house of Yahweh. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. For those of you who don't know, there was a God called Malak that the, the pagans would cause their babies and their little children to go through a fire. Or they throw them into a fire and burn them alive mm -hmm. to this God. He did the same thing. Read. Also, he observed times and used enchantments and used witchcraft and dealt with a familiar spirit and with wizards. And with wizards that peep and mutter. <laughs> Read. He wrought much evil in the sight of Yahweh to provoke him to anger. He wrought much evil. You see? Wrought much evil. Now that's good. We're going to pick up where where um, Nikki wanted to go over there to Jeremiah 44. Mm -hmm. We're going to read 15 through 18. Jeremiah 44 and 15. Mm -hmm. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods. Now these are Israelites. These are Israelites. All the men that knew that their wives had burned incense to other gods. Read. And all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, and Pathros answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of Yahweh, we will As not hearken. As for hearken. the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of Yahweh, read. We will not hearken unto thee. We will not listen to you. We are not going to listen to you. Read. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth. We're going to do what goes forth out of our own mouth. Not going to listen to Yahweh. Not going to listen to the light. We prefer the darkness. This is just going along with what your speakers have been bringing out all night. Mm -hmm. Read, please. To burn incense unto the queen of heaven. Into the queen of heaven. And do you know that the, the Catholics call Mary the queen of heaven? That's right. Yeah. That's one of her titles. One of her titles. Mm -hmm. the queen of heaven you come all the way down from ancient Babylon 6,000 years ago read please and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done we and our fathers our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem for then that's good that's good mm -hmm. I'm just, I, uh, I want to go over to um, the scripture reading. Mm -hmm. I got that. And I'm going to pick up where the previous speakers were. I want to start reading in four. four. Read four through seven for me. Uh, that's all I'm going to be able to, to touch on. First Thessalonians five and four. But you, brethren, are not in darkness. But we, brethren, are not in darkness. Like those kings back there, like these priests, like these popes, like these these priests back there. These priests were supposed to teach the people the law. Instead, the priests were corrupt. And the scribes and the Pharisees were corrupt. And all they wanted to do was put Joshua to death for telling the truth. Read. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. We are not in darkness, 
We are not in darkness. Five, you are all the children of light. We are the children of light. We are the children of light. Light. Read. And the children of the day. Children of the day. And the day star has risen in our hearts. Read. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Read. Six. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. They sleep in the night. Read. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. They are drunken in the night. Now I want to just get Colossians 1, 12 and 13. Colossians 1 and 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the sons in light. Oh, giving thanks unto the Father giving thanks unto the Father who has made us fit, mm -hmm. fit to be partakers, to be partakers. If you would have told me 46 years ago that I'd be doing this tonight on a Wednesday night <laughs> instead of out in the saloons, I would have thought, I would have looked at you like you had 10 heads. <laughs> And here I am. <laughs> Read. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. And you know what? It's, it's, a, it's a strong power. Yes. It's strong. It's a strong power. He has delivered us from that. Delivered us from that power of darkness. Right. Just like they came out of Egypt. And it was a plague of darkness. And brought, us, brought them into the light. He's brought us out of the world. This is the world here. He's brought us out of the world. Out of darkness. Into the light. Read. And hath translated us unto the kingdom of his dear son. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> There's a half an hour right there. Translated <laughs> us into the kingdom of his dear son. I'm going to end up. I want you to go over to uh, Ephesians, second chapter. Ephesians 2. 1? Mm -hmm. Ephesians 2, 1. And you has he quickened. And you has he quickened. Or what? What does quickened mean? Made alive. Made alive. Made alive. Right. He's made us alive. Mm -hmm. We were dead. We came into the class dead. Mm -hmm. He made us alive. Read. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Read. Wherein in time past. You walked according to the course of this world. We walked according to the course of this world. Mm -hmm. Darkness. Read. According to the prince of the power of the air. <laughs> the prince of the power of the air. You know? Oh. Who can be the stupidest? Who can do the stupidest stuff? Who can... Read, please. <laughs> The spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. The children of disobedience. Five minutes. Okay, read. Three, among whom also we all had our conversation. We all had our former manner of life. Some of us were worse than others. Some of us were a little more normal. Not much. <laughs> Read, please. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh. The lust of our flesh. Everything was mm -hmm. money, power, ego. Mm -hmm. just, just, you know, yeah. just how many toys can I collect? 
Mm-hmm. Read, please. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath. The children of wrath. Even as others. Even as others. But Yahweh, who is rich in mercy. Who's rich in mercy. Here's a word for you. Here's a word for you. That most holy place of that tabernacle, there was a, a, a Yahweh Elohim sat on that mercy seat. Mercy seat. Rich in mercy. Read. But Yahweh, who was rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. Wherewith he loved us. What, what did we do? Nothing. What did we do to, to, to earn that love? We were these sinners. Read. Even when we were dead in sins. Even when we were dead in sins. Read. Has quickened us together with Yahshua. Has made us alive or quickened us together with the Messiah. Read. By grace you are saved. Now, by grace are you saved. It's by grace. And it's by nothing else. Mm -hmm. It's by grace. Read. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Yahshua the Messiah. In Yahshua the Messiah. Read. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Yahshua the Messiah. Through Yahshua the Messiah. Read. For by grace are you saved. For by grace are we saved. By grace. Read. Through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of Yahweh. It's his gift, folks. Every one of us have received this gift. It's a gift. Read. Nine, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's not of works, because we'd all start boasting. I was in class four times this week. How many times did you go? You see, that's just how our nature used to be at one time. And it just isn't like that anymore. He has changed us. There has been a conversion. There's been a change. There's been a transformation. And it's just such a wonderful thing to go from the darkness to the light. It's really just, Mm -hmm. I don't know how you find adjectives. Thank you very much for your patience. I hope someone was edified by this. All praise belongs to Yashua. Hallelujah. 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 Tara? Oh, Tara said she can't unmute. Okay, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and close out the class. We'd like to thank everyone for attending this Wednesday Zoom and all of our visitors. It's a pleasure to have you here. We hold classes every Wednesday night here on the Zoom um, login, and then we have our Sunday live class, um, 6615 Sheldon Road in Tampa, Town and Country, Um, and that is from 11 to 1 p.m. on Sundays. So with that, I'd like to dismiss the class with the doxology taken from the last couple of verses in Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our savior through Yahshua, the Messiah, our sovereign belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 Beautiful class.